So nearly 10 years after the initial broadcast of The Devil is a Part-Timer, we're approaching its second season of the anime, a day I think many Devil's a Part-Timer fans thought we would never reach, given that there was no signs of continuing the anime. But what's interesting about watching the first season nearly a decade later is how it almost feels like something you would expect to watch in 2020, 2021, 2022, right? In that area when isekai have really started to be the dominating anime genre that you see a dozen shows every season that almost feel like a copy and paste, here's a new world, transported hero, or even in the case of something like this, a demon king now trying to fit in with modern society. Devil's a Part-Timer really does feel like it was ahead of its time, and it's one of those shows that you could easily recommend to so many people now to say, I know sometimes catching up to a prior season can be a bit of a chore, but holy shit, there's not many isekai like Devil's a Part-Timer, and especially when you have Satan working at McDonald's and having Satan take your order is still the funniest thing I have seen in anime, or at least one of them. I seriously think watching these 13 episodes in modern 2022 is so interesting because the comedy remains just as funny, and the idea of subverting what you would see as tropes these days, but just seeing how it navigates around so many cliches to become one of, I consider, anime's best, is remarkable. So, the thing that's always impressed me the most about this is its comedy, where it's not necessarily trying to be a comedy series in the way of, we're gonna tell you a bunch of jokes, but more so it's situational events where you have a hero who's tasked at killing the Demon King. You have the Demon King and his loyal general who normally would be tasked at destroying humanity, burning villages, you know, conquering the world, what you expect. And because they're thrown into a human world, a modern world you'd see in any other anime, they unfortunately have very little magic. And because of that, they ultimately have to either, you know, in the case of a Demon King, make people very fearful to recover his magic, or in the case of the hero, use what little magic she has and not be able to return home but kill her arch nemesis. But because said Demon King doesn't have any real magic, he unfortunately has to then go work at the equivalent of a McDonald's, as then you have this hero so dumbfounded because why in the actual hell would a Demon King, the person torturing me time and time again all these years, responsible for the death of those I love, why is he taking goddamn orders, and why is he so flirty and nice towards his co-workers like Chi? This show does a remarkable job at simultaneously telling a story that's interesting. Of course, you have the main love triangle between the Demon King, the potential of will the hero switch her feelings over to love the Demon King who she's sworn to hate, and you have the human girl Chi, who is the adorable co-worker that he works with, who is just a bundle of pure energy that is so adorable, it can sometimes be a little feisty, but ultimately you just want to protect that cinnamon roll half the time. And I love seeing the progression of the characters and how they truly feel like they naturally develop despite coming off of such extreme roles. Not many shows can take a Demon King, someone who is constantly referred to as Satan, and have him naturally transition to just want to be a part of the human world. Because when you think about it, right, you know, someone born into the role of Demon King has a lot of, like, evil expectations. You're going to conquer the world, you're going to be powerful, you're going to kill, you're going to blunder. But then when you're thrown into the human world and now you have a human body, you know, it's a very interesting experience when you naturally like, yes, you're living a poor lifestyle and that's not really the nicest thing ever. But there's so much about the human world that just it tops the demon realm. You don't have to worry about fighting. Yeah, you got to pay bills, but you're not worrying about your life. The worst you have is your arch nemesis who continues to knock on your door real loud, but seemingly she's not actually going to kill you. Someone like the hero who's been tasked at, you know, killing and basically living up to these expectations after being ripped away from her family at an early age, yes, is working at a call center, but also is now really starting to realize that maybe just kind of having a day job and going home and just enjoying the night is actually a lot better. It naturally progresses these characters to feel human after coming off of such extreme personalities without second-guessing itself. And the comedy, because of its situational jokes, are just so amazing. There's a lot of McDonald's jokes, one of which is, you know, the idea of teaching someone how to fix the broken ice cream machine, and the fact that McDonald's is notoriously known for having a broken ice cream machine every time you want their soft serve. Or, I think one of my favorite jokes in the show happens around the episode 5 or 6 mark. It's 
after or during a big battle and you have the general, Alcio, who is basically the right-hand man to Mao, who is obviously our demon lord, and in his dying moments after hearing that, you know, because they're poor, right, the only one with a job works at a fast food restaurant, he's not making the mad stacks that you would expect a demon king to make. And the fact that during his dying moments after hearing that he's been wasting money going to the movies with his allowance, and yes, the Demon King does get an allowance, he says, make sure you go on the first of the month because that's discount day. This man is more concerned about saving money than he is about his life that's about to be ripped away. That's the type of jokes that just continue to blow me away in this show, and the fact that you can have so many moments that you think in any other show that was being written today or adapted today, I feel like they would try to go more extreme. They would try to make it, you know, constantly funny in the way of like, oh, he's a demon king and he's working at McDonald's, so let's just keep him working at McDonald's most of the time. But you only see McRonald's is what they call it here, but we all know it's McDonald's. He's there a decent amount, but it's not like that's the main setting focus. Actually, I would argue you see his apartment, which is pretty run down, a lot more than you actually see McDonald's. And it's just the general building. So instead of making any one joke feel like it overstays its welcome, you're always eager to see McDonald's. You're always eager to see how a demon king is going to interact with the customers. And spoiler, he does an amazing job at it, which is why he gets promoted pretty early on. But it's great to see how something like this, it feels like what normally would be written to stand out from the isekai crowd. One of those things saying, hey, you know, we know everyone expects and knows what's going to happen based on the title alone, let alone a synopsis, so we're going to write something that subverts those expectations. But because the light novel, which ran for like 21, 22 light novels, something like that, the anime came out 10 years ago, right? It's one of those things that it just feels like it was ahead of its time, but because it was ahead of its time, it's relevant even more so today, given the landscape of anime and what's currently being made time and time again. Don't get me wrong, I love isekai. I'm what you would call isekai trash, and I would argue there's actually a lot of good ones coming out anymore. But it's no surprise that a majority do feel the same copy and paste template, where The Devil is a Part-Timer is one hilarious show that subverts everything you expect, whether you're new to the genre or you've seen dozens if not hundreds in it, and it just becomes such an amazing watch with great character progression. And the whole idea of almost having like a fish out of water experience with people who usually would be trying to conquer the world, and now we're having to obey police officers who think they're either cosplayers or trying to, you know, go into a play. There's just a lot of like general jokes you expect in this type of fish out of water situation, but leave it to Devils a Part-Timer to always find ways to make it still feel like it's not something that you could compare to any anime in the past decade. It really does feel like it has its own identity, which these types of shows usually can't say. Now I know the ending of the light novel I think rubs some readers the wrong way because of course, best girl wars always get in the way of a normal debate, but I'm one of those people who I just like watching characters and whatever they choose, if it makes sense for their character, I'm fine with. And I think what Devil's a Part-Timer does a great job at is I generally enjoy all the characters. I love the simple interactions between Chi and Mao with the General McRonald's or the dates or just, you know, the flirtatious best friends building and oh shit, I wonder if you'll end up with her, to then, on the flip side, you have the hero, Arch Nemesis, but man, it really feels like they have some chemistry. So what I think this show does a really good job with, not only just navigating around what you typically see as cliches in the isekai genre, but rather, what it does a great job at is it actually shows, like, love triangle anime who's boss by making you generally care for the different perspectives, and when they introduce more of the generals and who they used to work for in the other world, it just leaves a grin on your face. Still, one of the best anime I have ever watched, I thought so when I originally watched it nearly 8 years ago, and the fact that it's almost been 10 years since its initial broadcast and it's more relevant and I would argue even a better watch today than it was when it initially came out, it's no surprise that even after so many years this one finally got its second wind and is coming back for season 2 and hopefully not just season 2 but we'll see where it goes right. Thoughts if you have any on Devils a part time or whether if you recently watched it in anticipation of this new season like I did or you know maybe you got a refresher from this video, let me know down below how excited are you for season 2 that will be kicking off rather soon. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.